Hello, uh, dear JFN members. My name is Shachar Bruckner. I'm the CEO of Impala, and I have here with me David Fox Estrin, uh, Impala's partnership director. Uh, we wanted to record this session, which we did during the JFN conference, for those of you who missed it. Um, so that's the same session that we did in the conference. So let's dive in. And um, today we're going to cover uh, essentially three things. We'll start with a bit of background about Impala, its mission, and the product that we're building. We'll then jump into the platform and take you through a quick demo that shows some of the platform capabilities. And finally, we'll speak about the strategic partnership with the Jewish Funders Network and how together we're really uniting the Jewish philanthropic uh, sector and bringing it into the digital age. And I want to start really with a high level executive summary about what Impala is. And Quite simply, Impala is a groundbreaking new platform that makes social impact data both accessible and actionable, by offering three products. First, profiles. Every nonprofit and philanthropic foundation already has a profile on Impala that details information about their impact, people, financials, and every grant that they have ever gave or received. You can think about it really like GuideStar and Foundation Directory Online, for those of you who know it combined into one platform with more data and insights and completely for free. Second, we have ecosystems, which is an advanced business intelligence application that allows you to analyze any nonprofit ecosystem anywhere in the country. So let's say that, for example, you wanted to understand what the philanthropic ecosystem of Judaism in California looks like, for example, who are the organizations and the funders that are part of it and how they're connected, you'll be able to do so with a click of a button. And finally, we have my portfolio, which focuses on each individual foundation or funder and creates its own ecosystem, allowing for a seamless tracking, management, and optimization of your own grant portfolio. Now, in partnership with the Jewish Funders Network and with the generous support of the Jim Joseph Foundation, the Diane and Guilford Glazer Foundation, the Dell Foundation, and JFN board chair uh, Marsha Riklis. Impala is providing the entire JFN membership and all of their grantees with free access to its entire platform for 24 months. And all of this is really a part of a larger vision to usher in a new era of digital transformation and collaboration in Jewish philanthropy. And now, from that high level executive summary, I want to jump into how Impala actually works and what we're building here. The first thing that Impala does is really to centralize a lot of data that is coming from free sources. So first, publicly available data. We already scraped all of the 990 forms of every 501c3 nonprofit and philanthropic foundation. And in addition, data is coming from funders and nonprofits that join the platform. It all goes into a pipeline where we curate this data into pre-populated profiles for every nonprofit organization or philanthropic foundation in the United States. The result of this process is our networked data infrastructure. It has profiles for every organization and a search engine that allows you to navigate through them. Now, on top of this huge data asset, a uh, data set, we're building a suite of applications that are aimed to serve every need that nonprofits and funders have. We already started with ecosystems and my portfolio that I uh, uh, spoke about before, and then we're continuing with future applications. So, for example, uh, relationship intelligence, the relationship intelligence application um, will allow nonprofit professionals and philanthropists to see exactly how the organization is connected to hundreds of thousands of organizations uh, within uh, uh, the nonprofit sector. We're also building other specific products for funders and for nonprofits like centralized grant portal, culminating in the ability to donate on top of the platform, so donation solutions. The long term vision of what we're building here is a comprehensive giving network, a digital platform that already includes all of the data you need and simplifies communications, fundraising, reporting, and information exchange between every nonprofit and funder. Now, this is really a 30,000 foot view of what we're building, and it was important for us to show you what will be added in the future. In today's demo, we'll focus on the network data infrastructure, meaning the profiles and the search, and the applications that we already launched, ecosystems and my portfolio. For our demo, I want to introduce David Fox Estrin, 
in Palace Partnership Director, they will, will explain the specific use cases uh, uh, that we're about to demo and we'll show you how the platform works. So David, off to you. Awesome, thank you so, so much Shachar and thank you everyone for tuning in here uh, to our demo today. Uh, by now, you might be wondering, new, what can this platform do, do for me and, and how can it help my team and organization? And so that's exactly what we're about to explore over the next 20 or so minutes. So, Shachar, let's start sharing some of these use cases that we'll be, we'll be going through. First and foremost, as funders, one of the key things that we do is due diligence, right? So we're going to show you how Impala will let you evaluate any nonprofit in the United States without asking a single question, really making this process much more efficient and data rich. We'll also show you how you can evaluate your portfolio in an unprecedented way, really see everything from your the growth of your grantees, who's growing the fastest, as well as managing overall risk in your portfolio. And then third, we'll show how you can discover which funders you overlap with to spark opportunities for collaboration and also reveal ways that you can drive more efficiency in your portfolio. You also will be able to benchmark yourself uh, uh, compared to your other peers to see what else you can learn from the sector. And then also combining all of these capabilities and bringing them into your strategic, strategic planning, right? If you have data points as a baseline, you can now set targets for the future and really optimize your portfolio. And lastly, combining all of these tools and resources to give your stakeholders uh, an unprecedented tool, give all of your trustees, donors, executives, a really powerful tool for oversight and how they can also make recommendations for growth in your portfolio. So all of this together will be revealed in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and actually shift into the demo. So now I'm going to share my screen. All right, so here we are landing on Impala.digital, our website, and once you have credentials, you could go ahead and simply log in. And I land on our search product, which allows us to search among almost 3 million nonprofits and funders all across the United States. So essentially any entity that has ever submitted a 990 to the IRS is what we will be able to search among. And the first scenario that I want to put your that I want you to put yourself in is that due diligence scenario, right? So let's say uh, one of our team members revealed to us an organization that we want to do further exploration on. So let's go ahead and explore and see what we can learn by by visiting their profile. Now, in this demo, we didn't want to spotlight any particular organization from the Jewish philanthropic sector. So we're going to go ahead and take a look um, at the state of Massachusetts, where we have another wonderful partnership. So we're going to take a look at an organization called Samaritans, which is still biblically aligned. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn from Samaritans. So here we go in just a couple moments, we land on their profile. We see that with this check mark that they've actually claimed their profile and they've been verified by our team on the platform. We see they're based in Boston, Massachusetts, they're women led, and we have 990s in the system all the way from 2013 up to 2022. We have their mission statement as well as their 501c3 status and EIN number. And this also becomes a really easy and efficient portal to the organization's other digital real estate on the web, right? We don't have to spend time Googling around and wondering, is this the right Samaritans? We see we have their website as well as their social media profile. So really helpful to do more due diligence beyond even the platform. And then we've got three key tabs that will appear for every nonprofit on the platform, financials, people, and impact. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what we can learn about the organization's financials first. So we've got a number of really nice visuals that tell a story. We see the operating budget of Samaritans has been growing year over year. We love to see that. We also see the revenues and expenses broken down year by year, as well as assets and liabilities. We also can get a sharper look at the sources of the different uh, of their revenues and the sources of expenses. So we really can get a, a more specific view. And then finally, at the bottom, we see the definitive list of all of the funders that have ever supported the organization, how much funding they've allocated over time and, and over what time period. And then if I click over here, I see the table of all of the grants they've received. So these are over 150 grants. We see who the funder was, what any purpose was for the grant as listed on the 990, as well as whether it was routed through a donor advice fund. So we have that tag there on the far right. And again, anywhere you see this blue check mark, we're able to notice that those organizations uh, have, have already claimed their profile and have been verified by our team. And I'm really excited to share that I already see more blue check marks than I saw um, just even a few days ago. So a lot of folks are coming onto the platform to claim their profiles. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you on the, on the financials tab. 
and it is this funders change table. And it tells a really interesting story because we're able to click in and see who are the funders that started supporting this organization year over year and who are the funders that, have, that are no longer supporting the organization year over year. So we see who's in and who's out and we can look for any patterns that are either intriguing or concerning to us as we explore. So that is the financials tab. Next, we can take a look at the people tab. We know philanthropy and social impact work is very relationship driven. So now we can continue our due diligence by evaluating who are the folks that are involved in the organization, who are the executives, board members, employees, both past and present. And a very important feature is we're able to filter by last report and compensation, see, see the level of pay to senior level uh, staff, executives, and board members as reported. And then we can shift over to the impact tab. Now, this is my favorite part of a profile for a nonprofit because this is where the organization can share its impact story on its own terms. So what can we learn? We can learn the cause areas that it supports, the populations that the organization serves, and critically, specific measurable impact metrics that align with the organization's program. So we could see, for example, that uh, Samaritans has delivered over 80,000 24 seven crisis service calls and texts really critical for this organization and its own impact story. Lastly, we have the programs the organization in just about 10 minutes completed and shared all of its different programs which are up to date, which link over to the map on the right. And for any nonprofit that completes it pro its programs, they will also appear on all of the funders profiles as well, giving a boost to the nonprofit, a boost of visibility, which is something we always like to do to give them a leg up and get discovered by funders that may not have previously known about their work. So that is a nonprofit profile. And you can see how in just five or 10 minutes, we can get a really good feel for how the organization is doing both financially in terms of its people and impact. And we didn't have to even reach out to them just yet. So now let's shift over to a funder profile. And today we're going to take a look at the Bar Foundation, one of our partners based in Massachusetts, a large private foundation. And here we're going to emphasize the funding and funding overlap tabs. So what is the scenario that you might um, consider when you're visiting a funder profile? One, you could think about your own uh, data visualized. And then second, we can think about comparing ourselves and benchmarking to other funders and seeing what peers are up to in the sector. So let's dive in a bit further. What can we learn about the Bar Foundation's giving? Number one, I wanna call your attention to the average grantee reliance metric. This is essentially a risk management metric. Now, what do I mean? The typical grantee of the Bar Foundation typically gets about a quarter of its revenue from the Bar Foundation. And I've seen funders on all ends of this spectrum, anywhere from 5% average grantee reliance up to 50, 60, 70%. And this is just an indication of how much a funder uh, typically takes up of a particular nonprofit grantee's budget. And you may have particular perspectives on that. It's good to know what you don't know so you can make uh, strategies based on that. We also see the multi-year grantee percentage and get a sense of longevity of grantees in the funder's portfolio. So we can see that over half of Bar Foundation's grantees typically have a multi-year relationship. And just below, we can see the longevity, the number of years in portfolio by the number of nonprofits. So we could see that there are a certain number that are in the portfolio for anywhere from two to six plus years or one to six plus years. And then I also want to highlight the median first, second, and third year grant values, which are really a win-win for both nonprofits as well as funders, because a nonprofit is really able to right-size its uh, funding requests within the range that you typically give, right? So a funder, a nonprofit, excuse me, can see that if they're applying for a first year grant from the Bar Foundation, $150,000 is going to be probably in the sweet spot. And if they're asking for, you know, 200, 250,000, that is outside of the scope. And so you're going to receive fewer requests that are outside of the realm of the level of giving that you typically like to offer. I also want to highlight the nonprofit change chart, which is similar to the funders change, except in this case, we're able to visualize the nonprofits that have entered and exited either your portfolio or a peer's portfolio year over year. And again, we can look for particular patterns. Now, when I scroll down further, I also can see the grants by size as broken down by the specific level of the grant. And that connects to the summary table of all grantees on the bottom of the profile. So we see all of the grantees that have ever been supported by BARB, 
and we can see what overall share of their portfolio that amounts to and their average grant size. We also can see the full list of all grants given, and we can see almost 1,700 grants that were given by the funder uh, and to who and under what scenario. And again, I am able to make some dynamic updates here, and I can say, for example, show me grants that appear has given in the realm of 50 to 100K because maybe that aligns with my portfolio and I could be curious and maybe stumble upon nonprofits that I may not have um, considered before for giving to. So that is the funding tab. Next, let's shift over to funding overlap. And this is a really innovative way to spark potential collaboration opportunities that we might not have been aware of. Co-funding is essentially showing us overlap. It's showing us any two funders who support the same group of nonprofits. So in this scenario, I clicked in on line two, and I can see that there are 130 nonprofits that are jointly supported by the Barr Foundation and the Boston Foundation, and they may or may not be aware of this level of overlap. And this is a combined level of giving of $160 million or so. And we can see all the nonprofits and how much each funder provided each and every year. Now, if I was uh, the Bar Foundation, I might contact the Boston Foundation to explore opportunities for aligning our pipelines, our portfolios, maybe some data sharing. Really, really helpful to see this. And I wanna highlight for you that there's over 4,000 overlapping pairs for the Bar Foundation to explore quite a bit of potential collaboration opportunities. And again, I see those blue check marks, meaning that these are claimed profiles. So now we've covered uh, how we can search for particular organizations on the platform. We've also seen a nonprofit profile as well as a funder profile. And everything we've covered is free and will always be free to all users on the platform. But now what we'd like to do is shift over to our premium side of the platform and show you a bit about ecosystems. This is what all JFN members are eligible to enjoy for two years and through February 2025 and also all JFN member grantees. So let's see what ecosystems can tell us. An ecosystem is essentially any combination of nonprofits and or funders based on criteria that we can define. So for example, we can look at homelessness in Los Angeles, we can look at Jewish education in the state of New York or all across the United States, any particular sector. So let's go ahead and build a ecosystem based on landscape markers. And you can see we've got geographies, causes, and keywords. So I would love for you to follow along with me on the bottom to see the number of nonprofits and funders that are going to appear as we go from a very wide net and get more and more specific as we go. So let's say we wanna, we wanna see the Jewish philanthropic sector in education in the state of New York. So let's go ahead and start building this. I'm gonna choose New York State to start. And as a reminder, I can look at city, county, state, or all of the United States. But in this case, let's look at New York. And now as cause areas go, I'm gonna choose education. And I'm also going to go down here and include uh, Judaism. This again gives us a wider net. And again, I'm gonna go backwards actually. So we started off with over 160,000 nonprofits, over 25,000 funders. And now when I come back and bring in Judaism, and I go back up and bring in education, we can see how the focus in the ecosystem is really zeroing in 14,000 nonprofits and 11,000 funders. Now let's use some keywords to be, be, be even more sharp. So specifically, these keywords are gonna search the names of both funders and nonprofits, as well as their mission statements. And quite soon it will have program descriptions, uh, grant descriptions, and more data that can be found in the 990. So let's go ahead and add in terms like Jewish Day School, Jewish Academy, Jewish Judaic Studies, and Yeshiva. This will really help us zero in. Now I use the word Yeshiva, and I know that Yeshiva University is also gonna pop up. And because that serves a wider audience, I actually wanna go ahead and filter that out from my results within my advanced criteria. So that is placed there. So let's look, we have over 500 nonprofits and 817 funders that we're gonna look at as far as Jewish education in the state of New York. And that's a really nice focus group that we can look at. So let's define the ecosystem. And now we can see insights both on the funding side and the nonprofit side of the sector. So over the five year period from 2014 to 2019, for which we have the most consistent and large data set of 990s, we can see that there's over $260 million in ecosystem funding coming from over 800 funders that went towards over 500 nonprofits but I really can make this even more insightful and actionable. So I'm gonna take us through both the funding side of the sector and the nonprofit side of the sector based on some of those use cases that we talked about earlier. 
So first, we're going to be able to learn a lot about the overall insights in the ecosystem, as well as do some peer benchmarking on the funding side. So let's take a look. On the summary tab, I can see the story emerge about what's happening in this sector. Overall, Jewish philanthropic dollars in education are going up over time, year over year, more or less. And we also can see the funders that are entering and exiting the sector. Again, we can click in if we wanted to, to look for any particular intriguing or concer uh, concerning patterns. We also can click in and see grant distribution and see overall in the sector, what are the median and average grant sizes? What, what is the distribution of the grants? And then below, I have the definitive list of all the grants that have been given historically within this sector. I have over 5,000 grants that I could take a look at. I can see who the funders are. And based on the data here, I see a nice mix of DAP sponsors, private foundations, folks that we've been collaborating with already um, in the time of the JFN rollout. And we can see particular nonprofits they're giving to. And again, you can see that DAP tag pop up for specific DAP grants. Again, this will filter if I select in the chart. But things get even more interesting when I take a look at the comparison tab here. And it just takes a moment for the data to pop up because we're crunching millions of data points. So in just a second here, I'm going to call your attention to ecosystem focus. And that is going to tell us, here we go, it is going to tell us what percentage of a funder's giving is actually routed into Jewish education in the state of New York. For example, I can see the Caroline and Joseph S. Gruff's Life Monument Fund, for whom we hosted a webinar for their grantees just the other week. We can see that a third of all of their portfolio giving is being routed to Jewish education in the state of New York. This suggests high alignment in giving. I also may see uh, the OJC Fund, which allocates 7% to, uh, of their giving overall. The other thing I want to call out for you among all of these rich metrics is grantee reliance again, again, that risk management metric. And now we can start to benchmark ourselves relative to the, to the risk profile of other funders, anywhere from 12% to 33% or more. So these are just a couple of the metrics that I think are really insightful as you explore the platform. We also could take a look at overlap, but for the sake of time, I'm going to move forward. But this would be the same thing as what we saw on the Bar Foundation's profile, looking at the funders who have the same groups of nonprofits that they are supporting, revealing collaboration opportunities. So first, we just took a look at the funding side of the sector, and we were able to do quite a bit of peer benchmarking and learning about the dynamics. Now let's shift over to the nonprofit side and see what we can learn about these 500 nonprofits. So I'm going to click in and specifically look at the comparison tab. Now, this is going to be a wonderful place to sort of discover uh, Jewish schools and nonprofits that are working in Jewish education that I may not have heard of before. And I can see how they're doing in terms of their financials, their staff metrics, and overall how much funding and how many funders they have in the ecosystem. And I could even further go in here and see a breakdown of their revenues based on categories, as well as their expenses ba based on categories. Essentially, if there's a reason why you're going into 990s to do due diligence on nonprofits, we're not doing our job. So we want you to let us know if there's something that's missing here. But now you can see how you can much more efficiently both discover nonprofits that are engaged in sectors of interest to you and evaluate those organizations. Now, not only can we see these organizations in a snapshot comparison, we also can compare how they're doing in terms of their growth over time. If we wanna know who are the trailblazers, who are the fastest growing innovation frontier pushing entities in the Jewish education sector in, in the state of New York, I now can see that in just a click. So I can see, for example, Yeshiva Darche Eres, um, based in Brooklyn, has grown the most in terms of its budget metrics, its expenses, as well as the staff overall. And I also see Prisma Center for Jewish Day Schools doing quite well here as well. And let's say I'm doing this research. How do I actually document uh, and organize the organizations that I'm exploring? Do I track that on paper, God forbid? Uh, keep track of that in my mind, which I certainly can't do, but bless you if you can. Or maybe you're using a CRM. What we want to do at Impala is build a list feature and we already have that available to you. So let's say, for example, we come across Prisma Center and we think, you know what, this is a, a game changing organization based on the metrics and we want to keep track of them and add them to a short list of potential invitees to our upcoming Jewish education grant cycle. I hover over their name. 
and I can go ahead and click add to list. And there it is. Maybe there's an applicant shortlist for Jewish education or other particular uh, application pipelines that align with my portfolio. Or if I need to create a new list, I can uh, do so right here and leave notes. Now I wanna show you what this actually looks like. If we go into my list of lists, my list dashboard, you can see I've been creating a bunch for the Jewish philanthropic sector. And I actually had a call with a JFN member the other day and he was really interested in exploring the foster care ecosystem in LA County. So we built an ecosystem focused on LA County. And in just 10 minutes, we were able to find organizations that he both was aware of and organizations that he was not aware of. And he was really, really pleased to see that. And that way we can, and that we could reveal some of the metrics about the organization, but it gets even better because we can share this list within our organization with our colleagues and build these sorts of pipeline uh, prospect lists for grantees about grantees right here in the platform uh, and share that with as many team members as we want. We also can export the list and bring that into our CRM or wherever we do our grants management. We're not trying to trap you in the platform. So you could export in that way as well. Now we've covered a lot of territory here from the profiles, the ecosystems and lists. And now, you know, it was also really important for us to uh, create a product called My Portfolio. We know that each and every funder is essentially an ecosystem unto itself, right? So what we did is we went ahead and created uh, the My Portfolio view, which allows you to see your ecosystem of funders, of grantees that you are working with. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna walk you through how we shift over. I'm now gonna click in as if I was the Bar Foundation, which I do right here at the top. And if you're a funder, and as soon as you come into the Impala platform, this My Portfolio dashboard is waiting for you. There's nothing you need to do other than onboard the platform. And these data and insights about your giving are waiting to be discovered. So what can we learn? We can see how large the operating budgets are uh, of all of our grantees. We can see their sustainability by looking at how much cash do they have in the bank in terms of the number of months. Where do they support? Where do you support geographically your city, county, state? But I really want to call attention to the reliance distribution. So if you recall, we covered the, the average grantee reliance a bit earlier. Now you can visualize risk across your entire portfolio and see how many nonprofits am I supporting that get 1% up to 100%, anywhere from less than 1% up to 100% of their revenue from me as a funder. And it's up to you to make the judgment call as to whether that fits your risk profile. So for example, we can see that the Bar Foundation has three nonprofits that get almost half of their revenue from, from them. And we see that there's over 73 nonprofits that get less than 1%. And we can see who they are um, every uh, right here in this visual. And similar to the ecosystem, again, we can take a look at the, the distribution of funding based on cities, causes, look at overlap, and then compare our grantees and see who's growing the fastest and who may need a bit of a boost. I also quickly just want to call your attention to the bottom right where you can see in the time since you've granted to these organizations, whether any of them have had their night, their IRS um, 501c3 status uh, revoked. So that may be also of interest to you as well. So we've just covered my portfolio and that, like I said, is available to you. Now there's one more thing I want to show you today before we shift back to uh, the close of the presentation. After our really exciting and thrilling launch with JFN in February, we heard from a ton of individual donors, JFN members, and specifically those who, have, uh, who are DAF donors. And they were asking us, can I have a profile on Impala for my own giving as an individual or a DAF holder? So within just a few weeks, we worked with our design team and we created designs for individual and DAF profiles. And I wanna show those to you because they're gonna be available in just a few weeks. So I'm gonna shift over to the flow of how this looks. And I wanna emphasize that the key thing that we wanted to focus on, our key guiding principle was privacy. So you'll see every step of the way how we're preserving your privacy by default as an individual donor or as a DAF holder. So let's go ahead and explore. So I'll first be able to be prompted to onboard and I can connect my LinkedIn profile. I'll be asked if I'm an individual donor and let's say I am. Now I'll then also be prompted to share if I have a particular DAF sponsor. So let's say I'm David from South Florida and I have a DAF sponsor of Schwab. So I'll be able to type that in and select Schwab. 
And then either two things will happen. We'll be working with Schwab and Schwab will be able to provide the data or you'll be able to get an export of your data from Schwab and it'll just be a click to upload your grants history. And then in just one click, here you go, your donor profile was created on the platform. But again, I wanna emphasize that you're beginning in private mode, invisible to anyone except for yourself and your DAF sponsor, of course. So let's see what now this looks like. Now, first, I wanna let you know that just like um, the profiles for a funder, you're also gonna be able to see your funding data as well as who you overlap with and determine uh, and classify your own impact metrics. So you have a lot of the same tools and capabilities as those that are already on the platform. But important to highlight that you will be by default private as you see this tag right here. Now I wanna walk you through some different privacy options that you will have, you will govern. So again, by default, you're private. No one sees any of the data. But we also could offer you the opportunity to be anonymous. We've heard from some folks that that's of interest. So what does that mean? Let's save the changes. You go from being Kevin to DAF number 1023, a random number, and we remove any information that might indicate who you are personally. So you, we've removed the mission statement, for example, as well. But you still have uh, some of the other information that you saw on the profile. Now, lastly, I want to bring us over to the to the completely pu public option. We also heard from some individuals that said, you know what, I actually want to function as a public foundation, essentially, but I want to, you know, keep my overhead low and function as within a donor advised fund. So can I be public entirely? And so the answer was yes. So here we go. You see the tag updates to public and you will be able to be searchable on the platform. Anyone can find your profile. And let me show you what it would look like if someone searched and was looking in an ecosystem. You would see all these different funders. This is all fake data, by the way. And there you are, Kevin Beagley III, appearing as if you were um, a formal private foundation on the list of other funders. And again, this is by default private and only if you opt in to being transparent. So this is what we have built for DAF Designs. And this really sets the stage for two things. We are really uniting the entire sector on one platform, as Shahar mentioned, a comprehensive giving platform. So here you see how we are bringing on individual donors with profiles, as well as DAF profiles. And on the other side of the sector, we're also working with fiscal sponsor organizations and nonprofit uh, programs and projects within fiscal sponsors. So you as funders will be able to see potential programs that you can support like never before. So that covers our demo for today. And I wanna hand it back over to Shakar, who's gonna cover a bit more what this means for the sector and for all of you moving forward. So thank you for tuning into this demo. Thank you, David. This was indeed an excellent demo. And I want to take us back into the presentation to cover our final uh, part, which is more about the JFN partnership. Um, and basically how you're going to be able to get access to everything that David just showed you. And really the short version of it is that due to the generous support of some of the leading foundations and philanthropists in the JFN membership that you see here, Impala is providing the entire JFN membership with free access to its entire platform, everything that David just showed you for 24 months. So who's included in this partnership? First, every JFN member. So every philanthropic foundation, every Jewish federation, individuals or families, that are registered as JFN members all around the world. Second, every organization that is funded by a JFN member. This includes more than 20,000 nonprofit organizations that receive instant access to everything that we've uh, just showed you. Now, we really uh, launched this partnership about a month and a half ago, and so far, we've seen a great uptake, and we really wanted to share some of those numbers with you. So we started with the kickoff event that happened at the beginning of February. We have uh, more than 500 people joining us in this uh, lunch event. This was the biggest virtual JFN event, JFN event ever and was a great, great success. And from there, we see increased numbers uh, joining the platform. So already more than 130 JFN members are on the platform, which is more than 25% of the entire membership. We have 705 nonprofits that are funded by those uh, uh, members that are already on the platform. And all of them together translate to almost 1,300 users that are using Impala already. But 
apart from the numbers and putting the numbers aside, really the most important thing for us was to hear the reception. We see an extremely positive response to the adoption of JFN. And for us, it was extremely important because we really want to see that uh, nonprofits and foundations are actually using it and benefiting for it. And you can see uh, uh, some of those quotes that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm bringing up now. All of those quotes are uh, real and were either given by foundation professional or nonprofits that started using Impala. And as you can see, they're speaking about efficiency. They're speaking about saving time. They're speaking about bringing innovation to this sector. All of those are things that we really put at the core of the work that we're doing at Impala. And the work that we've done so far is really just the first step in a much larger vision that we're pursuing. And this is specifically correct for the Jewish philanthropic sector. And I want to take you to how we're thinking about it. So we all know that Jewish philanthropy and, uh, and, and nonprofits are already connected to a certain extent around common values and identity. But we also know that they're fragmented across borders and generations and types of entities. The main strategic aim of the partnership with JFN and Impala is to really centralize all of those different entities into one digital platform. Now, as this partnership grows, it will add more and more entities together. So we already started from US-based nonprofits and private foundations. David also explained about how individuals and donor advice funds will be able to get access to it. And pretty soon, we're also exploring the possibility to add Jewish federations through a partnership with the Jewish federations of North America. The next network that we'll add is the Israeli ecosystem and any other international Jewish nonprofit or funder. Now, everybody already has access to the platform, but we really want to uh, include profiles for them as well. And finally, this initiative also aims to really ensure that we include the new, young, and more tech-savvy generation in how philanthropy is moving forward. Now, by uniting everyone in one platform, we essentially building a comprehensive giving network. It really streamlines how people get access to data and how they collaborate. Now, how does this look in practice? I really want us to imagine together the possibilities of all of us working together on a digital platform and how we can really shape the future of Jewish philanthropy. So let's say that we indeed brought everyone together. What now? I want you to really imagine the kind of challenges that uh, we had to face in the last several years. So for example, a natural disaster strikes. So we can think about the earthquake on Turkey or even go two years back to COVID. We can think about a war that breaks out where philanthropic effort is really the difference between life and death. And we all remember the conference at the center of the conference uh, last year, which was the war in Ukraine. But philanthropy is not only reactive. We also want to support a, a proactive movement. So let's say a movement that counter anti-Semitism that we want to support, or maybe a campaign that is celebrating Jewish culture and arts. Now, what we're trying to do with Impala is to really reshape how we advance all of those philanthropic efforts. So first of all, such a platform allows us to have reliable data in real time, which immediately translates to understanding where philanthropic money is needed, where it's already being given to, and where are the missing gaps. It also translates to include all of the right people. So really experts in those specific fields that can now work together in a much, much easier fashion, both on the philanthropist and the uh, change maker side. All of this culminates really into a sustainable digital infrastructure that really fosters collaboration in levels that today are just not possible. Now, while Impala is not just for Jewish philanthropy, and while we're already seeing expedited growth all across the United States, we are proud that the Jewish philanthropy is joining us at this innovative moonshot, because what we're trying to do here is heavily, heavily rooted on the Jewish value of Tikkun Olam, where everyone is involved in their communities, anyone a philanthropist, anyone a change maker, we're all coming together into one platform. But this is, uh, as we said, this is our vision. And bringing us down to a more tangible realm, I want David to explain how we're working today to make this vision a, a reality. So David will close us uh, out with the last slide in this presentation. David, off to you. Wonderful, thank you, Shachar. So really, in essence, we're here to help the entire Impala team. Uh, we are experienced. We've either been on the 
grant making side of the equation, the grant seeking side of the equation, or for some of us both like, like myself. And so we've got real experience in the sector, which is why Impala exists in the first place. And there are really two calls to action that I want to share with you today. We really want to make sure that we're able to help you make the most of your premium access to Impala over the next two years and really as soon as possible. And the first way to do that is to book a one on one session from uh, with us. This has been really the most exciting and fun way for us to ensure that you can get the most value on the platform, beginning with how to actually access it. We'll send you a simple invite and we'll take a couple of steps and you'll be able to get value anywhere from my portfolio to ecosystems that are relevant to you and optimizing your profile. So you appear to the public that you in the way that you want to. And then second, we would really welcome you uh, to, in, to, in, to share Impala with your grantees. We've been collaborating with a number of JFN, many JFN members to host introductory webinars to invite all of your grantees onto the platform as well, because like we've shared earlier, not just are you, uh, are you eligible for premium access to the platform for two years, but also all of your grantees. And that's a beautiful thing because here is quite a unique opportunity where we get to unite both sides of the sector on an equal uh, level playing field to make the most of democratized and unlocked data access. So essentially, it comes down to two, these two things. Get in touch with us. All you have to do is email us at support at impala.digital, and you'll reach any, anyone from myself, our customer success manager, Laurel, Shahar, or Simon, and we'll be able to support you every step of the way. So we hope to be hearing from you very, very soon. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we look forward to being in touch. Thank you very, very much, uh, and we'll see. Bye-bye.